welcome to episode one. We're going to be putting the mountains and sky into the composition. This is the first part of ten uh, episodes in this series. Uh, first, I'll show you where to get the source images from. There will be a link in the description, uh, but I'll just show you where we can get them from so everybody can follow along. Uh, first, we need to go, it'll, the link in the description will bring you to uh, this page on my website. If you're just filling your details, I can regularly update you with blog posts and any other videos that are coming your way, uh, and also uh, any updates to the Facebook group that we've got. So fill in your details there and then you'll be sent an email uh, and the password for the image library will be here. So you just click get source files in this email and then type in the password here and then press submit and then this will bring you to uh, the sort of hidden library where you can get all the source files from. So we're interested in the last outpost but there are source files for all of the speed arts that I've done as well. So we'll click on the last outpost and this is going to be the finished image. This is what we're working towards. So this is the original picture. So just literally drag it to your desktop. Just drag it over. All, all these pictures. I did do this through Behance and also DeviantArt but the files were much smaller once I open them in Photoshop so they're just reference really for that site so I've created this Adobe Adobe portfolio where you can pull the images off at their original uh, aspect ratio which is good so once you've got those then we can close that down and we can open Photoshop and we'll, uh, we'll crack on with getting the mountains in let's wait for it to load I've got two screens so the splash screens on the other screen there we go right so that's open now so what we want to do is open up our first original image so we'll just press open and look at desktop which is where I drag the images to and then we want to open that one so this is our original file it was a file uh, a photo that I took in uh, the Yorkshire Dales uh, it was something or nothing really it was it was a nice picture I mean there was a lovely day just to sit there and watch the world go by with you know no, no traffic or anything no no outside noise it was just so peaceful but as a picture it didn't it wasn't really strong enough to be included in my main album so it went into sort of a work in progress for projects such as this so you can see these sort of leading lines as this it all kind of zooms into the middle of the picture so I quite like that how the clouds form so I'm gonna keep those in I'm gonna get rid of the sky out of the mountains picture and, and keep that but I'll show you exactly how I do that using masks so we'll just open now the mountain picture which is that one there Eventually I'll load these pictures into Bridge so I can find them through Bridge. So we've got we've got this mountains picture now. We want to select uh, the top half of these mountains. So we use the rectangular marquee tool. Don't be fooled by the rectangular shape tool because that'll that'll just draw a shape and we, we're not we don't want that. What we want is to select. So make sure you select the rectangular marquee tool and then just select the top half coming down to about here where that sort of path goes to a bend uh, and then what we want to do is just move that out of the way if it is attached at the top like that just pull it down so, so you can move this layer around and then you want the move tool that's V on the keyboard and then just drag that across and then we can get rid of that and we don't need it so we've basically got our mountains layer which I'm gonna call it now it's always good housekeeping to label your layers because especially with projects such as this you can end up with quite a lot of layers and adjustment layers as well and trying to find uh, one that you might want to edit can be quite a task if you haven't labeled them properly so we'll get into the habit of labeling your layers so what we want to do is just position that somewhere 
in the background. I'll just lower the opacity of this layer just so I can see roughly where things are going. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. On this version of Photoshop I can pull these in and it does it proportionately and if you've got an older version of Photoshop you would have to hold shift to, to do it proportionately. So in the newer versions you can just do it by just dragging out and it does it automatically but if you if you want to do it disproportionately you've got to hold shift in the newer version so it's a bit, bit just you've just done it the other way around really so I'm gonna have to hold shift now to do it disproportionately and just drag that out so that looks about right Okay, so I'm just going to put the opacity back up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So notice what we've got now. We've got this hard edge. And that's just where the, that layer begins and the other layer ends. We've got this hard edge. So we need that's not realistic. So we need to get rid of that hard edge. And we do that by masking out uh, or feathering that edge so it's not as hard. So what we want to do is create a mask. So press this little symbol down here and that creates a mask. And all that is, is it allows us to delete, well, I'll say delete, erase sort of parts of that, of, of that mountain layer. And we do that just by painting black or white. So if I paint black onto that mask layer, see, watch what happens. So can you see? So all I've done is just painted a black line and it's just where I painted black, it's erased it. And when I paint white, you just paint it back in. So it's, it's non-destructive to the actual mountains layer. So all I need is a feathered brush, which I've got. I was going to bring that down 100% feather. And then start at this edge and just make sure you're painting black. That helps. And then just paint in. This is where you can get a bit artistic, you see. You can start to make your picture come alive. I'm going to keep that little walkway in, although the the, the uh, tower might hide it, but I'll just keep it in for the time being. Now I originally edited the original landscape so the colours matched the mountains, so you shouldn't have much problem blending this in, because originally the grass on the original picture was quite bright green so I've dulled that down a little bit so it actually matches the fauna in this mountain range so you, you shouldn't you know, like I say it should be quite easy to blend so we've d we've uh, created that soft edge now and it looks like the mountains have always been there if you look at the mask all we've done is just painted just get rid of those little bits So all we've done is just feathered that edge. So we've got no hard, hard edges. So that's really, that's quite good. So the next step of this tutorial is to bring back our original sky, this dramatic, nice cloud cover over the mountain tops. So we do that by what I call creating a seal. So we're gonna create a seal on the top of this mountain range, and then we're gonna pour black into uh, the layer mask which is going to bring back the original sky so it's a little bit of a laborious task uh, but it works wonders well, we could mess about with selecting the sky but sometimes it bleeds into the mountains and you get all sorts of uh, unwanted artifacts and things like that so this is a tried and tested method that I find works really well 
so what you need is make sure you paint in black and on the layer mask and you want about 50% opacity sorry 50% feather sorry not opacity 50% feather because uh, you don't want it too feathered on the top of the mountains and just basically just paint across the top of the mountains just sh shaving a few pixels off just to make sure that you're not leaving any of the original sky in place if you do go wrong just paint in white and uh, you'll bring back them you'll bring back uh, the, the mountain so it's all non-destructive so just like I say if you go wrong just paint it back in white and then carry on in black and you just want to just paint an edge all across the top of the mountains this is where a uh, a graphics tablet comes into its own really because trying to do this with a mouse is quite a tricky task I'm using the uh, Huion canvas pro and I've had it now for about six months I think and it's really what really worked wonders for my art because I'm, I'm literally drawing straight onto a screen so it's you know it gives a whole new dimension to digital art and painting got a lot more control the only difference with this uh, graphics tablet to the Wacom ones I've been used to is you have to charge the pen but literally I've only charged it twice in six months it's it's not really a, a problem and unlike uh, Wacom they actually give me a spare pen as well and loads of new loads of nibs right if that happens just press undo it's just where I've drawn and it's not quite gone to the hand when you press in space right we've nearly done it and we're nearly there excellent so we've painted across the tops of the mountains and if you just look at the mask you can see this sort of seal now this will stop the black paint running into the mountain so click the paint bucket tool and make sure you've got black selected and again you're painting on the mask and just pour that in now you'll notice what we've got is like a fringe and that's just where the brush was feathered so just keep tapping until that fringe disappears and there we have it it's gone as easy as that so there's a little bit of a white speck in that corner just get rid of that there we are so now, as if by magic, the sky is now gone. So there you are, now we've got our original sky back. We can see now we've only, we've masked out everything apart from the mountains. This layer is clipped to this uh, background layer, so I'm just going to release clipping mask. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to color tone these mountains. And by that I mean is, there's a little bit of green tint in this mountain here and I just want to color tone these images to suit the environment so if you just go to adjustments layer and color balance this will allow us to tone the image tone the mountains to the environment to the lighting conditions of our original scene this is really useful when doing digital art because you'll be importing things from different lighting environments and you have to make sure that they suit the original scene that they're going into now if I wanted to warm the mountains up I'd just bring this to the right but as you can see I'm actually warming the whole image up and I don't want to do that I want to just apply this effect to the mountains so I just press this clipping symbol and that will apply it just to the mountains layer below it as you can see so I'll just put that back to zero so like I said there's a little bit of green in there so I'm just going to do the opposite of green which is magenta and just bring that up a little bit not much, just that these are real subtle changes. You don't want to do much here because you could end up creating more, more work for yourself later on. So that's not bad. Probably a little bit more red. It is about trial and error. It's just testing, testing the water. You know, go to extreme as well just to know exactly what it is that you're trying to change 
I think that's okay actually. I've got minus one, minus 18, and minus 27 on that. But I might change it later. So that's the before, and that's after. Like I say, it is subtle, and it just just makes it more more realistic as to that part of that scene. So I'll just have a look at levels as well. Again, make sure you press this to clip it to that uh, layer, and then just darken or lighten. There. So yeah, that's uh, that concludes uh, episode one. We've we've put the mountains in. What I'm going to do as well is just to group those in their own folder called mountains. So everything in mountains now is kept in that folder. So join me on episode two, where we will be putting in. Uh, the outpost, cutting it out from the ori original image and placing it in uh, to this scene. So I'll see you on episode two.